All right, everybody, we are back for the final epilogue. This time we're going to be talking about all of Samus's gear. Now, this is uh, something I've kind of been looking forward to since the very beginning. Seeing Samus all fully powered up is uh, one of the great feelings of joy that I get from playing these Metroid games. So let's see what she is working with. We're going to start off with the arm cannon. And of course, there are several different beams here that we have access to. And the first one is the power beam. Power beam is the default arm cannon. It has the best rate of fire. Press C up to select the power beam as your active weapon. Samus's notes, the power beam can be used to open blue doors. If you see your shots ricochet, cease fire. The power beam is not working against that target. You can use the power beam to quickly clear an area of weak foes. Next up is the ice beam for some reason. The ice beam can freeze enemies solid hits from the blue Hits from the ice beam may also slow foes down. You see down to select the ice beam as your active weapon. Samus's notes use the ice beam to open white doors. The ice beam is quite effective against fire-based creatures. Charge the ice beam to increase the time an enemy will stay frozen when hit. Some frozen enemies can be shattered by missile hits. Wave beam. The wave beam fires powerful electric bolts. This weapon has a limited homing capacity as well. Press C right to select the wave beam as your active weapon. Samus's notes, fire the wave beam to open purple doors. The wave beam won't home in on targets without a lock on. Press and hold L to lock on. Charge the wave beam to fire a fierce electric blast. Enemies struck by this blast will be enveloped in electrical energy for a few moments. Plasma beam, that's the one we have equipped, so that's why it's a different color. The plasma beam fires streams of molten energy. This beam can ignite flammable objects and enemies. Press C left to select the plasma beam as your active weapon. Samus's notes, fire the plasma beam to open red doors. The plasma beam is very effective against cold-based enemies. Charge the plasma beam to fire a sphere of plasma. Enemies struck by this blast will be engulfed in flames for a few moments. And finally, the phazon beam. The viral corruption of the power suit has altered the arm cannon as well. It is now capable of firing the powerful phazon beam. Samus's notes, the phazon beam appears to trigger in the presence of high concentrations of phazon. Regular arm cannon functions return when phazon is not present. The charge beam does not function when the phase beam is active. And that is Samus's beam weapons. Now we're uh, going to focus on the morph ball and all of its special abilities. The Morph Ball changes your suit into a compact mobile sphere. Press X to enter Morph Ball mode. Press X again to leave Morph Ball mode. Samus's notes, like the Power Suit, the Morph Ball is modular. There are several modifications that can be added to improve performance. The Boost Ball can be used to increase the Morph Ball's speed for short periods. Press and hold B to charge, then release B to trigger a quick boost of speed. Samus's notes, while charging, the longer you hold B, the longer and faster the boost charge will be. Throughout the environment, you will encounter U-shaped channels known as half pipes. Using the boost ball in these areas will let you reach higher places. Build a charge as you descend the half pipe, then trigger the boost as you ascend the other side. This will give you speed and momentum you need to reach new heights. Spider Ball. The Spider Ball allows you to move along the Morph Ball track to move the Morph Ball along magnetic rails. Press and hold R to activate the Spider Ball ability. Samus's notes follow the magnetic rails to explore new areas. The Morph Ball Bomb can be used to trigger a bomb jump while attached to a rail. The Morph Ball Bomb is the default weapon for the Morph Ball. Press A while in Morph Ball mode to drop a Morph Ball Bomb. Samus's notes, the Morph Ball Bomb can be used to break cracked walls and activate certain devices. If the Morph Ball is near the a Morph... gosh. If the Morph Ball is near a Morph Ball Bomb when it explodes, it will be popped a short distance into the air. This is called a Bomb Jump. When a Morph Ball Bomb explodes, it must be close to the enemy to be effective. The Morph Ball Bomb can easily break items made of sandstone or taloric alloy. The Power Bomb is the strongest Morph Ball weapon. Press Y when in Morph Ball mode to drop a Power Bomb. Samus's notes, Power Bombs do not have unlimited ammo. Use them wisely. The Power Bomb can destroy many materials, including Bendesium. Each Power Bomb expansion will increase the number of Power Bombs you carry by one.
And that is Samus's Morph Ball. Now we're going to look at Samus's suits. The Power Suit is an advanced exoskeleton modified for use by Samus Aran. Samus notes the Power Suit provides life support functions and is well shielded from attacks. The modular nature of the Power Suit allows for additions of weapons, visors, and other gear as needed. The Power Suit's shielding loses energy with each hit. Collect energy when possible to keep the shielding charged. Then we upgrade to the Various Suit. The Various Suit adds increased heat resistance to the Power Suit. Samus notes this modification increases your defensive shielding. While the Various Suit can handle higher temperatures than normal, extreme heat sources and heat-based attacks will still cause damage. Gravity Suit eliminates the effects of liquid on movement. Samus notes this modification improves your defensive shielding. The Gravity Suit allows for improved movement in liquid environments, but does not reduce damage delivered when exposed to hazardous fluids. Visor modifications in the Gravity Suit make it easier to see underwater. Phazon Suit. The Power Suit has been corrupted by viral exposure, turning it into the Phazon Suit. Samus notes the viral corruption of the Power Suit has some beneficial side effects. The suit is now resistant to the effects of blue Phazon. The suit is not invulnerable to the effects of all Phazon, however. In addition to Phazon resistance, the corruption has dramatically increased defensive shielding levels. And for some reason, energy tanks are thrown in this section as well. So the energy tanks increase the power level available to your suit's defensive screens. Samus notes with each energy tank increases your suit's energy by 100 units. The more energy your suit has, the longer you can stay alive. You can fully recharge your energy tanks at save stations. Your gunship has this capability as well. And that is Samus's suit. Now taking a look at her visors. Combat visor is your default visor. It provides you with a heads-up display containing radar, minimap, lock-on, reticles, threat assessment, energy gauge, and missile count. Press D-pad up to select the combat visor. Samus's notes, icons for the arm cannons you possess are shown in the lower right corner of the combat visor. Icons for the visors you possess are shown in the lower left corner of the combat visor. Uh, also with these, you can uh, take a look uh, at, at Samus. We'll take a look at some of the other stuff. You can move her around too. It's kind of fun. So this is the, the suit with all the other stuff. The, the scan visor is used to collect data. Some devices will activate when scanned. Press D-pad left to select the scan visor. Move the visor over targets with this symbol. Then press and hold L to scan. Use D-pad to select another available visor or press A to turn the visor off. Samus's notes, mission critical scan targets will be red in color. Scanning enemies with this visor can reveal their vulnerabilities. You'll be unable to fire any weapons while the scan visor is active. Scanned data vital to the success of the mission is downloaded and stored in the logbook section of the pause screen. Press R on this screen to access the logbook. The X-ray visor can see through certain types of materials. Press D-pad right to select the X-pad, the X-ray visor. Samus's notes, the X-ray visor can reveal invisible items, areas, and enemies. Robotic enemies jam the X-ray visor's frequency, eliminate them to restore function to the visor. And the thermal visor allows you to see in the infrared spectrum. Hot objects are bright in the visor, while colder ones are dim. Press D-pad down to select the thermal visor. Samus' notes, the thermal visor will show the weak points of certain foes. Use the thermal visor to see in total darkness and poor weather conditions. Brightly lit areas, explosions, and intense heat can impair the thermal visor. Enemies with temperatures close to their surroundings will be tough to spot with this visor. And that is Samus' visors. Now onto the secondary items. The space jump boots, also known as the super platforming boots, increase the leaping capability of the power suit through the use of boot mounted thrusters. Press B to jump, then press B to jump again during the jump to use the space jump boots. Samus's notes, timing is important when using the space jump boots. Experiment to discover ways to increase the height and length of your jumps. The grapple beam allows you to swing back and forth from special points in the environment. Grapple points appear on your visor as a grapple icon. Press and hold L to fire the grapple beam. Hold L down to stay connected and let go to release. Samus's notes the grapple beam can be used to cross large gaps. Use the control stick while grappling to swing in different directions. 
Missile Launcher. The Missile Launcher adds Ballistic Weapon Capability to the Arm Cannon. Press Y to fire the Missile Launcher. Press A to return to Beam Mode. Samus' notes, missiles fired with a lock-on will seek their targets. Missiles can destroy objects made from radion or brimstone. There are charge combo enhancements scattered throughout the environment. They use the missile launcher and the charge beam in tandem to fire more effective blasts. Each missile expansion you find will increase the number of missiles you can carry by five. The charge beam allows you to increase the damage and effectiveness of the arm cannon. Press and hold A to charge the arm cannon, then release A to fire. Samus' notes the charge beam has a limited tractor beam capacity. Use it to pull small objects to you. There are charge combo enhancements scattered throughout the environment. They use the charge beam and the missile launcher in tandem to fire more effective blasts. The charge beam increases the performance of each arm cannon mode. And the beam combos. The charge combos allow you to fire the missile launcher and arm cannon together. The combined attacks are stronger than the normal blasts. The arm cannon must be charged to use a charge combo. When your arm cannon is charged, press Y to fire the charge combo. Samus' notes, the single shot charge combos fire one blast at a time. Each shot uses a number of missiles. Sustained fire charge combos will fire as long as you have missiles. Hold down A after you fire. It takes 10 missiles to trigger these charge combos, then 5 missiles per second afterwards. Page down for information about the individual charge combos. This data will download to the logbook after each charge combo is acquired. The super missile is the power charge combo. Samus's notes super missile is a single shot charge combo. Each shot costs five missiles. Super missiles can destroy objects made of cordite. The ice spreader is the ice charge combo. It can freeze targets in a wide area. Samus's notes the ice spreader is a single shot charge combo. Each shot costs 10 missiles. Ice Spreader is limited against aerial targets. The Wave Buster is the Wave Charge combo. This potent blast auto-seeks targets in the area. Samus's notes the Wave Buster is a sustained fire charge combo. It costs 10 missiles to activate, then 5 missiles per second afterwards. The Wave Buster will seek enemies without a lock-on. The Flamethrower is the Plasma Charge combo. You can sweep its stream of flame across multiple targets. Samus's notes, Flamethrower is a sustained fire charge combo. It costs 10 missiles to activate, then 5 missiles per second afterwards. The Flamethrower is most effective against multiple targets in an area. And that is all the beam combos. So like I said, you can use the, uh, the C-stick here to move Samus back and forth. You can zoom uh, in and out. And you can rotate her around here so you can see from the back and from the top and the bottom so that's kind of cool it's uh it sort of reminds me of the trophies in super smash brothers uh that's that's one of my uh go-to kind of things so i kind of like doing stuff like this uh, you also have the uh the samus morph ball and uh you know, I, I suppose this is probably like a little less interesting but uh I, you know this is this is a cool artwork uh, game does work hard on this, so you know, gotta gotta honor their hard work by at least taking a look at it. And yeah, it's pretty cool. I I wish I had done this for the the other suits. As far as I know, it's not possible to go back in time and take a look at those. But hopefully, this was uh, an awesome experience for all of you guys getting to see Samus's cool items and in inventory. I know I really go wild over this kind of stuff, so I hope you all liked it too. Until next time, this is Miser Poignet out. Have a great day.